I'm Indy Nidell, and once again, this is the Great War on the Road. And today, I am in Italy, in the Dolomites, at La Casui, and we're going to talk about the Austro-Hungarian and Italian positions during the First World War on this front. Now, I have a local expert with me. This is Stefano Edling. Now, he's in charge of the preservation at the Open Air Museum. Can you tell us a little bit about what that involves? Yeah, we try to restore all the history of the Mount Lagazzui, where the Austro-Hungarian and Italian fought during the war. Uh, just below our feet, there are uh, three, more than three kilometers of tunnels, of positions, of uh, trenches, and of storerooms. And when you see, like, how high up we are, you realize what a massive feat of engineering and industrialization this war really was for the first time, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was the first modern war, and that's why it is very interesting to us. It is a war where more than uh, 14 countries of modern Europe were fighting here. There are people coming from Hungary, from Czechia, from Slovakia, from Poland. And it was a war of great uh, uh, challenges in terms of organization, in terms of logistics. You can imagine that for each soldier they had to carry up 70 kilos of provisions, ammunition and food. And water. And water. And we are three more 3,000 feet uh, meters above the sea. I mean, well, you can get a look at how high we are. Now, some of the names that we'll cover today you've heard in our regular episodes. Now, over there, uh, in the distance but not too distance, is Marmolata, the glacier, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, now you can tell us a little yeah. bit about what went on there. Well, there was a whole town that was dug inside the glacier. Inside? The inside the glacier, because ice is easier to dig than, than rock. Okay. And provides a great insulations. Uh, so it is, when outside is so cold, inside the temperature is always zero degrees. Now, what sort of stuff did they make inside the glacier? Well, there were um, tunnels for connecting the storerooms, the huts, uh, connecting to the uh, trenches. Uh, soldiers used to stand guards outside, but had to live inside. But it was kind of a mini city, sort of. Yeah, yeah, there were lots, lots now, of how, people how, living there. How big there. would that be? Well, I think there were around 300 people living there. Wow, so that's so hundreds fairly of fairly big, yeah, fairly big. Yeah. It's amazing, the engineering. Yeah, absolutely. You think well, let's go and look at some of, some of the places on the front, okay? Yeah. Okay, these are the Austro-Hungarian positions that I'm at right now. And if you look over there, you can see the Italian frontline positions. You see where that sort of window is, where they can fire things out of. Now, to get up to there, they had to blast uh, a gallery up to, to go all the way through. And it took 2,000 tons of explosives, which at the time was two months of Italian production of explosives. And they had to bring all of that up. I'm not kidding. This is September, and this is absolutely miserable weather. Can you imagine what this place is like in January? Uh, yeah, and the Austro-Hungarians brought their stuff up through here, up to this door. And you can't see from here, but if you go down there, they actually have trenches down there in front of here. And, well, you'll see the machine gun position just next to us. But I wanted to show you guys that. This is pretty inhospitable stuff. And it's a massive feat of industrial warfare. That's the thing is here. It's not just the blood. It is really industrialized warfare like it had never been before in history just to be able to fight, just to be able to shoot on these peaks. It's pretty incredible. Okay, we're now inside the Austrian positions that we just saw. Can you tell us a little bit about where we are? Well, we are on the top of the Mount Lagazzui, uh, on the Feldwache here, the Feldpost number four. And it was a defensive position that was uh, built after the um, Italian mine uh, blew up the, the, the part of the mountain. And you were telling us about the effort it took to dig, dig this out, the numbers about, and the Austrians bringing everything up and the Italians drop, just having to drop their Can you talk a little bit more about that? So. Yeah, sure. Well, this was a very technological war, a war with a lot of organization, a lot of uh, logistic, uh, logistic capacity. Imagine that for each uh, soldier on the front line, they had to take up 70 kilos of equipment, ammunition, water, food. All the way up here up here and we are 3,000 meters up uh, over the sea. Now you can't see of course, well I've taken my gloves off because it's a lot warmer inside here than it is out yeah, there is. and that's not even thinking about the wind just in general. This is, you could, it's not too hard to survive in here, it's not comfortable but you, but this is just September again if it's January, February that's another thing entirely. Well inside the mountain the average temperature is the annual average. Okay. Uh, outside goes to minus 30, 
plus the wind. Yeah. So it gets, your perception goes to minus 40, 45. But inside it goes to minus two, minus three, which is great for living. Yeah. It's very damp, very humid. Uh, living here is going to be very difficult, very difficult. But anything, it, I mean, you're, you cannot dry up your dresses and they were dressed in, the, in wool, right? Yeah. They didn't have the oh, gets very wet, modern yeah. material we're yeah. using now. So it was very difficult life, so very right. difficult. Okay, uh, S uh, Stefano is now going to take you down so you can see one of the actual trenches. Now, where are we right now? We are right in the middle of the no man's land, in between the Austrian and the Italian position on the top of the Lagazzoi. I put pan the camera around and realize this is between the armies. Somebody's higher up, somebody's lower down. Just want you to get a good idea of what the mountain warfare was like. And halfway up the mountain, just below our feet, there were the Italian positions. So the Austrian from here could uh, let rocks and uh, bombs fall down on their heads. Like the Middle Ages, just roll Like the down. Middle Ages, exactly. Gosh, what an awful position to be in. Okay, well, you guys have fun down there. I'm not going down there. We are on the, in the in Austrian trenches on the top of the Lagazzoi. And we are just 30 meters away from the most advanced Italian uh, post. The barbed wire we see from here is just is the, is the Italian post. These trenches were uh, reinforced after the Italian mine because the Italian tried to get hold of this position that was impossible just because of the machine guns that were up there where we have been before. Uh, machine guns that were aiming at the attacking Italians in this position. Okay, and now we can walk in the Italian in the Austrian trenches and get to the barbed wire, so you can see the panorama from there. Yeah, all around us you can see all the lookout posts of the Italian and the Austrian lines, the trenches on the top of the mountains. And inside these mountains we have storerooms, we got huts, we got all what was needed for, to the soldiers. And all this has become, a, in the last years, an open-air museum, open to everybody for free, just to visit the incredible remainings that these soldiers have left, in order to understand what was that life, to try to understand that event that still is incredible is exciting and it's very interesting for us. So we are on the top of the pre-summit of the Lagazzoi that was conquered by the Italian thanks to this huge mine, 30 tons of explosive, that destroyed the top of the mountain. And just behind my shoulder there is the exit of the tunnel that starts at the bottom of the mountain. 600 meters up, uh, you come out of the tunnel here and we are on the front line. Halfway up the mountain there is the Cengia Martini and we can see down there all the remainings of the huts and all the trenches of the Italians halfway up the mountain. And down at the bottom is the Fonbankstellung of the Austrian lines. So the Cengia Martini was trying to uh, weaken the, the Austrian defensive line across the Valparola Pass where there is also the Sperre Tre Sassi. So this is, gives you the idea of the complexity of this war, of the depth, of the hate, of the, how difficult it was to bring up all the provision for the soldiers, because they were living here. They have been living here for uh, two and a half years, in winter and summer. We'd like to thank Stefano for showing us the amazing open-air museum at the Lagazui, which you can and should visit. You can find out more in the video description. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.